Earlier this week, I'm about to present the sixth and final session of a storytelling workshop for a group of high-producing financial professionals. It's a great group to work with, and I've prepared an hour-long presentation, complete with slides and handouts. It's going to be a highly impactful conclusion to our course. But as soon as the session begins, one of the members, the hardest working and one of the most successful members in this organization, makes an unexpected confession. Michael, just thinking about telling my stories, especially my personal struggles with my health, it freezes me. I'm terrified. It's like my brain shuts off and I don't know what to say. I'm so scared that people are going to judge me and not want to work with me because they think I'm weak. Whoa, I did not see that coming. Now, this woman is hardworking and she tends to be a perfectionist, but she caught me off guard. She then tells us, I feel like if my story isn't perfect, I can't share it. It's not good enough. Maybe I'm not good enough. Wow. Then another member, also highly successful, jumps in. He says, yeah, I'm kind of going through the same thing. I'm struggling to work on these stories because I, I have a lot of self-doubt. And one by one, the group starts opening up about their presentation fears, their anxieties, and this ongoing sense of feeling like an imposter. This is not what I planned for. <laughs> but 10 minutes in, I made a decision. You know what? We're not going to go through all this prepared presentation today. This conversation is too important. Now, this wasn't the script I'd written. It wasn't the slides and the carefully crafted handouts I'd put together. But this was the presentation they needed. And that's why I decided to throw out the script. But this is a concept I've taught for years, but I rarely have to use it. Most presenters mistakenly believe that our job is to present information. Yeah, that's a small part of what we do, but the most important role we have is to understand the emotional temperature of the people we're speaking to. And most of the time, we're able to determine this before we prepare our presentations. We can talk with the meeting planners, management, or even team members, and they can help us gauge where they are and what they need from us. But from time to time, you walk into a room or a virtual arena like this one and gain an unexpected perspective on what people need in that moment. And when they open up and give you new insights, that is a critical decision point for us. Do we put our egos aside and listen? Do we forget about the hours we put into creating, preparing, and rehearsing? You already know the answer. If we're committed to serving the people in front of us, we've got to be willing to throw out the script. I don't have another script. I use the prop on the first take. We have to throw out that script and lean into the moment. Now, here's the irony. When we do this, we give people the space they need to share their fears and struggles. We build trust in a way that slides and rehearsed words never will. We've earned the right to be in front of them at some future point. And when we do get that opportunity and get to share our insights, we'll have much more impact because they are more open to hearing us because they know we've heard them. Presentations delayed are not presentations denied. If we're willing to give our audiences what they need, we'll have those opportunities. The next time you're in front of a group and you sense that the conversation is going in a different direction, a more important direction, don't be afraid to set aside your presentation. Toss the script. Serve them where they need you most, and you'll make an impact that lasts far beyond your prepared words. What's been your experience of situations where you've had to throw out the script? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your stories.